Hey everybody, this is Kalen, and this is Fire and Ice Guild's Lost Precipice Beetle Race Explained. Uh, but before I get going, I want to point out, there's this Oakart's Essence over here, and the idea is to take the Essences up a series of clouds and get up to this platform up here, which is really cool. Ocean did it, I highly recommend checking it out, but don't use this mirror to get up there, that's totally cheating and spoils the effect. Use the Oakart's Essences. So I feel like I have to apologize real quick for perhaps making this a little bit too difficult. Uh, it wasn't really my intention to make this a super hard track at first, but I did want it to be uh, a puzzle. I wasn't looking for like the technical difficulty of it, although I think it perhaps came into became that, and you know I got used to that, and I just kind of made it that way after a while. But uh, initially, what I was really going for was a challenge in terms of like a puzzle. I, you know, like I like the puzzle aspect of the game. There's plenty of that. The jumping puzzles, central tier before mounts, trying to get up to the, some vista on the side of a mountain. There's only one little path that you can, uh, you know, get up there. Tiny little rock somewhere that allows you to start the the, the trek upward. You know, it, it, and figuring that out is I've always enjoyed and the challenge of that. And I feel like the races are no different. Uh, trying to get those gold uh, times are on a couple of those races are very difficult and uh, you have to figure and it forces you to figure out where's the best place to use the speed boost where's the best place for bond of vigor and once you do then suddenly you're you start shaving off lots of time off of off the track and whatnot and it's uh you know it, it's that sort of thing of like where you have to try and figure it out the puzzle of it is definitely what i was trying to incorporate into this race uh, and that's, I, I think, however, this first sequence was a little too challenging. It was difficult putting it together. I kind of, eh, I felt like I kind of got trapped in into the sequence I had already started, and then I just kept on tweaking it until I got it so that I could do it on a reliable basis. But uh, it's, uh, but it's definitely a little challenging. So I'll explain all that, and uh, and I'll also go through and explain basically all the pitfalls of, of the race. Try and do it as quick as possible. It's going to take a while, but uh, you know. So I apologize. I'm going to put links in into the comments to the different sections of the track, kind of a table of contents. So if you don't want the spoilers, because I do feel like the explanation video is a complete spoiler for this thing, uh, you can you can just go to the parts that you need help with, as compared to watching the whole video and getting the whole thing explained. So and spoiled. Uh, so I encourage you to do that and on top of that, you know, if you don't want to get into the whole thing I you know, there's also the other three videos that will show you all the kind of different paths and the different ways You can kind of take this and uh, and on top of that There are some other ways that I'm sure other people might be able to figure out that I never really perfected I'm aware of a few nuances that are possible But anyway, if anyone comes up with stuff like that by all means, uh, you know, let me know and show me I'd love to see it so first off, I want to hit on some basics of the mechanics of the beetles. Uh, there are a number of things that, uh, that will help in this race that maybe you're not quite aware of. Uh, first off, uh, if you hit the back button, you will break, you will actively break and slow down. However, you don't necessarily always need to do that. You can just stop pressing forward and you can lose some momentum. This is much more effective going uphill than say downhill, but uh, you know, sometimes you just want to lose a little bit of speed, you're coming in a little too fast, and just letting up the forward button can sometimes be enough. Next, leaning, uh, strafe and left and right keys will lean your beetle, and this provides a tighter turn, I'm sure pretty much everybody's aware of this, but what you might not know is that there's no speed loss associated with a lean. When you lean, you don't lose speed, whereas with a drift, you do. There is a, you do incur a penalty with the drifts. I try and avoid drifting as much as possible, but sometimes it's necessary for those really tight turns. In this race, I would say there's only one spot where you really absolutely have to drift. Everything else can be uh, leaned through. And the last mechanic I want to discuss with you guys is the spacebar. Now, the spacebar actually really has two mechanics associated with it. The first is this little hop right here when you're on solid ground. Uh, however, I try and avoid this like the plague, and that's because it often will unintentionally trigger, because the keyboard repeats the spacebar twice, a the second mechanic, which is this. When you are airborne, you can do a trick in midair, and this trick has the great advantage of a, of regenerating adrenaline. It's about a third of your adrenaline bar each one. For a long jump like this, you can actually get three different tricks in if you keep hitting the spacebar, and you'll regenerate completely. 
Alternately, you can do you can hold the spacebar down, and as long as you are holding the spacebar, you will regenerate adrenaline. Uh, either way works. Um, but the sp holding the spacebar allows you on smaller jumps that are more than just a single quick trick, uh, and you have a little bit of hang time, you can get a little more adrenaline out of it. Uh, as I said, the little hop, it's got its problems uh, when you're going over a slight slant like this, and you do a hop and you come out this way, sometimes you'll trigger the, the trick right after that, but then you'll land and you'll interrupt the trick because the animation hasn't uh, completed, there isn't enough time to complete the trick, and that then results in instead of just instead of gaining adrenaline you then instantly lose everything you got and you will also take a speed loss it, it penalizes you for not landing your trick properly so and, and in fact for long drops like this one if you are still holding your trick down if you're still in the space bar down or in the process of doing a trick when you hit the ground you will be dismounted and this is like actually kind of the cool part of this race, I think, is that it does force you to use all these regens. It makes it technically difficult, uh, you know, your timings and all that. But, you know, and I apologize for that because it wasn't really my intention initially. But uh, it, it is cool in that it teaches you. It forces you to use regen constantly, uh, almost every jump. And I think that's a good thing because you're going to learn. It's forcing you to learn how to use a mechanic that the game devs have not incorporated into races quite yet. There are no places where you have to regen these two jumps so, so that you can boost for a third. Like, they just don't do that. And so it's like this overlooked aspect of the beetle mechanics, and, and this race will, in fact, teach you how to do that, and you'll get pretty good at it by the time you're done. So, without further ado, let me explain these first two jumps. Uh, basically, you're going to boost from this corner right into this. You're going to go flying, and you're going to hold spacebar in midair to regenerate your adrenaline on your way down. And there's a lot of hang time. You can do three tricks if you want, but I always just hold it. Uh, and your goal is to land anywhere in between these two lanterns that are placed as landing zone markers. But really, anywhere in here is fine. The ideal, I suppose, is up here. You'll take less damage the further up you go. Uh, down here you'll take more damage, and you might actually get dismounted if you landed this far down. But uh, basically anywhere in here is fine. And then you're going to kind of arc through this and uh, start facing into this turn here. So you're going to be turning in midair, essentially. And then you're going to bounce down, and anywhere in here you're going to boost again. Now, you can boost as far as late as down here, hit this ramp, you'll have a lot more speed in midair, you'll have the boost going midair and at the top of the arc, and that means you'll you'll have a uh, lot more speed coming into this turn down here, but I do not recommend that, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, I recommend boost as soon as you can on here. All right, so let's give you an example. Boost, trick, aim for that lantern, Turn, boost whenever. I usually take the left hand side, and I trick on the way down. Not because I need to, but just because there's so much hang time. Alright, before I get going on the next part, there's a sequence of two jumps, a kind of pattern of two jumps that repeats uh, four different times in this race. And here's the first one it's a, the pattern is a long jump followed by a much shorter jump. In this case, this one kind of breaks the mold and that this isn't very long and that this one can be long if you have a lot of speed. But down here is, is the last of this series of, of, these, of these double jumps. And this one has a long hang time. And the second one is a super fast, very short hang time. Uh, in this case, what you want to be doing on the second one is just tapping the space bar the moment you leave the board. If you hit it too late in the air, or if you uh, hold the space bar at all, you will hit the ground while you're still doing the trick, and you will lose adrenaline, and you will lose speed. So when I refer to these, uh, I usually call them double regens or double jumps, or and I refer when I say quick regen or quick trick, that's what I'm referring to, are those really quick boards where you have to just tap it and be done. So this next sequence here is probably the most difficult to figure out and uh, of the entire race. It's really all about this downward ski slope kind of ski jump here. You have to have a boost in order to make this jump uh, and land up here properly. 
In order to do that, you need to be basically touching this board and be making contact with it long enough that you can activate a boost and get something out of that boost so that you can can do this, which means you can't be landing way down at the very, very bottom if it's too late. And also, if you're coming in too fast, you can't bounce your way down. Uh, you can, obviously, if you just tap the space bar right when you hit the, the ground, hit hit a boost but because you're airborne then after that uh the physics of the mount will not give you the same amount of forward uh, boost as you would if you were touching the board when you hit it so you still won't get enough and you'll end up falling short uh, obviously also if you come in through here too slow you're going to fall short so really uh this is all about this whole sequence is all about speed management getting the right amount of speed and because you need adrenaline here, you need a double regen on your way down. And because you need a uh, boost here to get up, you already have to have adrenaline here. So it's really boost over the top, regen, regen, and boost again. The key to doing this successfully, I think, is to actually take this corner pretty slow. Uh, Evie came up with this. She's like, oh, I just lean. I used to drift through this all the time, and it didn't work very well. It was inconsistent. Uh, a lot of times what will happen is you'll drift through, and then you'll kind of kill your forward momentum going this way because you've run into the side too much. And, uh, and then you absolutely need some movement going forward. So Evie's method was to, to just lean through this, maybe take it a little wide, come in, and then cut the inside with a lean. And then that allows you to get yourself lined up for this boost here. Usually you'll be running way over to the left, but you can get as far. You can actually really stay on, hug the inside even and still pull it off. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is there is an invisible wall right here. You cannot run off this edge anywhere along here. You are protected. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, and that means what it's really all about is lining yourself up straight so that you're going to go in the right direction because you don't want to boost yourself into this invisible wall. You will kill some speed that way. And then the other thing is the timing. Now, I would say the timing is basically anywhere about halfway between this board and then halfway and then probably almost to the end of this board that's your window you want to be boosting anywhere between here and here uh the problem with boosting too late like when you're on this board here is that these curved ramp boards something in the physics of them makes it so that if you trigger your boost while you're already on them it just does not work it somehow kills your your momentum and instead of gaining speed, forward momentum and, and height, you don't, you lose it and you end up hitting the rock somewhere around here and you'll, you'll wipe. So you have to hit it before. I'm not exactly sure what the last second is. I'm not sure if it's the, the beginning of the board, but I think it's pretty close. So your window is really halfway to somewhere here. Um, and that's what you're aiming for. And if you boost then, you'll get enough speed that you, when you get up here to the top, you're still boosting all the way up here. And that gives forward momentum as compared to just upward. And even as high as up here, you might still be boosting if you triggered it pretty late. Uh, that might actually result in too much speed. So again, it comes down to speed management. Now, how do you kind of do that? Well, you can let off the space, the, the forward button a little bit. That helps or can help. And... Uh, but generally, you don't need to. You're going to be aiming the right-hand side of this path. You're going to land somewhere in here, maybe even as high as the board. And then you're going to bounce up over, and you're going to do a second regen, once off of this, and then once off of this. And that should land you pretty smoothly there. If you do feel like, and it is just a feel, you have to get used to this to uh, kind of get the feel of it. If it does feel like you're doing a little too much speed, you can uh, either just come straight on the right hand side and land over here. This will get will remove a little bit of speed by coming by landing on the left hand side. You travel more distance and that and that kills a little of your speed. Or even if you're really really fast, you can take the left hand side here and then the left hand side here and just follow the left all the way along. Uh, but the typical path is right through here on the right hand side landing just in this area now unfortunately in order to do that uh, 
to learn that down there, you actually have to start at the top. There's no other way around it. Uh, we're gonna go through this and show ya. Boost whenever. In fact, sooner kinda better. You don't need to do adrenaline, you got enough time. Then it'll regenerate it on its own. Just fall, doesn't even matter if you hit the rock there. Kinda take this lazy. Boost, you're up, still boosting. And go over the right, regen. Faster regen. And that's pretty much a perfect way. After the ski jump, you're going to want to use your Bond of Vigor at this point, and you're going to want to use it right away. This regenerates your adrenaline along the straightaway and allows you to boost before you get to this curved ramp here. As with all the curved ramps, it won't work right if you boost on it, so you will need to do it before. Uh, you can do it as early as this downward slope. Once you've made contact and you hit your boost, you can then hit Bond of Vigor. And uh, you can also do a jump and a trick in the jump on this, but it's not strictly necessary. The Vigor will cover you. You can also land here and then hit Vigor, but it'll be a lot closer. You won't have a lot of time, but it, it usually works. You'll then go over the right-hand side of this ramp with a boost going. You will fly through the air, and then you're going to kind of angle yourself down and to the left a little bit as you on your way down so that you go into this little ravine in between the walls. And this is what, basically where you're going to end up landing. And you have so much time in this air that you will easily be able to regenerate all your adrenaline, but you do not want to trigger it at this point. You want to wait until you go up these little stairs that you can't quite make out back here. And at the flat part above, that's when you finally want to hit your boost. If you don't have a boost, if you failed to get your vigor off, uh, it's not the end of the world. You can just go over this ramp at a normal speed and you'll land down here on this pedestal in between these two lanterns and bounce your way down to the bottom here. You'll be going real slow and you'll take a little damage, but you'll be fine. This next part is a double jump coming up, followed by a boost and then a second double jump. Uh, to get there, you're gonna be coming off this ramp up here after the ski, ski, ski sequence, and you're going to fly through the air, regenerating on your way down, and you'll land somewhere in here. This will then bring you, you're going to curve around up these stairs, holding off on your boost until you get to the top, which will give you enough speed to make this double jump here. What will happen is you'll shoot off the top of this, and your goal here is to aim for kind of the top right corner. It doesn't really matter, it's not too... Not too precise, but anywhere in there is fine, at which point you will have the first jump for your regeneration. You can hold it a moment, and then you're going to land and come over here, take the turn, and hit a second very fast, very quick regen. Uh, ideally, you want to wait a second or two, or half a second, before you get to around here, and then do your next boost for the Cauticus jump. This is Cauticus and you are going to jump over it. To pull this off, you will have just finished coming through a pair of jumps, double regen, and giving yourself full adrenaline as you land on this board on this straightaway. Ideally, you wait half a second or so before you hit your boost, and then you're gonna come through and you're gonna aim for this middle right quarter of this board as your perfect angle to get over Cauticus reason you don't stay on the left is that there's this branch that hangs over and it will mess you up uh, and too far to the right risks kind of this uh, and it forces you to make more of a turn in the air than if you just kind of go right off this middle part uh, you're gonna go over regenerating adrenaline as you go you're gonna go over his head and you're gonna aim for these stairs right here the reason is if you are coming in a little short over here, you will fall. If you come in a little short over here, you'll simply bounce over just like you're supposed to do. Uh, if you waited a half second back there, you'll be landing in this area here, giving you a good bounce, which gives you an opportunity to get your second regeneration of adrenaline, which then gives you full adrenaline, lean around this turn and line up and you will be able to boost right about here. And that gives you, that sets you up for the next sequence. And this next part is what I lovingly call the chaos sequence. Uh, it's it is without a doubt the most chaotic of all the uh, of all the jumps and, and parts of this, and I love it. It's awesome because you never really know what's going to happen. Um, there's three kind of possibilities of how this works. Uh, 
first off, you could come in here with zero speed, zero adrenaline off of Cauticus, in which case you're just rolling through here. And your first path that you can take is down these, this uh, pathway here, and you can curve around and just wander down there. And that's fine, uh, keeping contact with the ground the whole way, and that's fine, that works. Uh, the second is if you failed Cauticus, uh, or the second, the double regen anyway, and you don't have full adrenaline, you will roll up this slope and you'll pretty much come to a pretty slow crawl through here, but your adrenaline should be getting pretty close because you should have been fine over Cauticus. The only thing that usually fails is the second one, the second regen. So by now you'll have full adrenaline again, and somewhere in here you can boost and hit this ramp. Uh, the third possibility is this. When you do get Cauticus right and you have full adrenaline and you can boost on this lower ramp here, you will shoot over the top of this, arch around very slightly over all this ground, and then you're going to land somewhere either right before or right on this ramp. And this presents the first opportunity for a regeneration. You will be airborne as you do this, so here's opportunity one for regeneration. The second is, and third, are from here down into here. And this is two more regens you can do, uh, or you can simply hold it if you like. But this is where the chaos really comes in, because you never exactly know where you're going to land, where you're going to hit. You can bounce off this wall, you can land on this tree branch, you can hit these rocks and bounce off of these, and it doesn't really matter as long as you just kind of get funneled in, which pretty much always will happen, down this way towards the next, the next plank here. And then, finally, you have a fourth opportunity for regeneration as you bounce off of whatever you're bouncing off of here, or I suppose ideally if you land perfectly along here, you can hit this rock and that'll launch you up into the air as well, and that'll be your fourth regen coming down, giving you a boost here. The thing about this is there's four opportunities for regeneration and you only need three. You will have full adrenaline with three. So if you miss that Cauticus uh, double regen, it's not a big deal because you still have three chances to get all your adrenaline back before you get down here. So let me string some of that together for you. You'll be coming off of the ramp. You'll land down here. A full adrenaline because you did tricks, but you're gonna wait until you come up these steps. And you're gonna boost here and you're gonna aim for the right hand side of the ramp here. You're gonna do adrenaline one, two on the top of this. Wait half a second and then boost again. Adrenaline one, two, lean, boost, one, two, Three, four, boost, and that's that. The next part is this very tight turn next to the PvP arena here. You'll be coming out of that chaos of those jumps and adrenaline and boosting, and then you're going to hit this ramp right here. You're going to come flying down, and you're going to be doing tricks, of course, all the way down to regenerate your adrenaline. And... If you come in a little slow, it's not a big deal. You'll just hit these stairs. Uh, it'll slow you down, and it'll make this turn very easy. Um, but most of the time, you're going to be coming in really hot, really fast, and you're going to be landing in this area here. The problem with this turn is that it's extremely difficult to do perfectly. Uh, the ideal solution is to do this. You're going to land, you're going to drift and turn to the right, and your goal is basically to slide and drift sideways into this divot right here. That's pretty much your best case scenario. The problem is, and the catch is, if you don't make that, you slide into this divot here, which is much deeper, much uh, harder to get out of, and it'll basically kill your forward momentum. Now, either way, not a big deal. See, this one's much, much shallower. Not a big deal. Either way, you'll just boost out of it. But ideally, if you wait a second after, if you still have some forward momentum, you don't. You're not forced to boost instantly. You can wait a second and come boosting down here later. Uh, or if you want, you can just boost immediately. It doesn't really matter too much. 
But, uh, and of course, you can always just slow down and take it easy and just, you know, lean into it. But the ideal solution is to come in with a drift and get that drift to land in this divot so that you can keep going with a lot more speed. So after you take this drift turn, you're probably going to be facing this direction when you hit your boost, which means you're going to be leaning pretty hard to come around this left-hand turn. And then you're facing down this tunnel pretty chaotically, often pretty out of control, and you can't really see a lot, which is how I like it. So, uh, but the, the nice thing here is that I really have engineered this so that these two rocks, this one and this one, should funnel you out into the middle here. You'll lose a little speed if you hit the sides, but it's not really a big deal. It used to be that this catches you. I don't, I think I've eliminated it so that that doesn't happen at all anymore. So uh, you're pretty much any direction is gonna be fine. Just as long as you're aiming down the tunnel, you'll, you'll get this. Now, this is a, the first of a double jump. So it's a long hold on the regen here. And then the second one up here will be a super fast, super quick one. You're gonna lean through the right and stay on the inside track and then the left side is gonna be where the inside track is next but this one you don't want to get too close to this wall or you will hit it uh, so the the goal is just to land down here in the middle somewhere or really anywhere and then boost again if you don't get your adrenaline up for the second boost not a big deal you can just roll off the edge and you'll land down on this roof and you'll be able to use this ledge to cruise along here and stay out of the water and drop down to the ground and continue on your way. All right, so this is me coming in for a run on this uh, tight turn. I'm gonna have full adrenaline to get started, so I'm gonna be able to get the first three opportunities. One, two, three. Here's some chaos, I'm bouncing off that tree limb. Boost, adrenaline on the way down, hit the flat, and I'm gonna go right into a drift. And you don't see it, but I got into that little divot. I'm going to boost right out of it, and this is the double regen. Long one, and short one. Jump into go for another boost. Regen on the way down. And that's that. Alright, so the end of this race is you coming off of this ramp, preferably with a boost beforehand. We'll just send you up in there and have you landing down here somewhere. You'll be regenerating adrenaline in the air. If not, you'll just be bouncing off these roofs, and you'll be taking your time as you come around the corner. Uh, or come around this area and that and either way you should have adrenaline ready pretty soon once you get around this turn you're gonna avoid the jump pad and with speed you're definitely gonna want to lean and then as soon as you line up you're gonna hit your boost and that'll bring you through this little s curve coming up this narrow canyon uh first to the left and then you're to the right you're gonna be leaning to get through those and then line up here for the stairs as a jump which you'll regenerate adrenaline through landing you preferably somewhere around here uh, if you bounced off the walls a bit you'll probably have lost some speed and now the danger is that when you take these stairs you might land right here interrupting your adrenaline regen uh, alternately you can skip the the boost here take the the s turn slow and boost down here before the stairs in which case you'll take it with a lot of air and the danger there then is interrupting your adrenaline regen by hitting this awning so if you do that you want to come into the left but ideally you come in here land down here now if you did interrupt your adrenaline regen or it doesn't look for whatever reason like you're going to have a full bar coming around this turn here you're going to want to use bond of vigor back here so that you do have full adrenaline for this uh, you might lean a little bit to take the turn and then you're going to line up for those boards and boost again the boost will make you skip over the water, uh, preferably just one bounce. If you come over to the left, you might get two, which will slow you down a little more, but one is the ideal. So basically just right through the middle here. There's kind of three rocks. I usually aim for the middle. Here's the third. You can, if you want, swoop around, give you a little more uh, height, but it's not really needed. A boost here will take you across. Now you're gonna want to then use your Bond of Vigor. If you haven't already, after you boost here, you can boost while you're still on the ground or once you get over to these uh, to these boards so that you regenerate adrenaline through here for the next jump at the end. Now this gives you the ability to shoot straight through the middle and this will bring you over to here and let you finish up real smooth. Um, however, if you 
for whatever reason, do not have adrenaline ready and you cannot boost before you get to this ramp, uh, what will happen is if you go through the middle, you'll probably land right around here in the water and you'll end up being dismounted, which really sucks when you've just done the entire race and you're within sight of the end and then you get, you know, wiped. So uh, if that's the case, if you doesn't look, if you've already used Bond of Vigor early or if you think you're going to uh, not have it regenerate fast enough for whatever reason, uh, you're going to want to go off the left hand side here. The reason being the distance from here to the shore is a lot less than from here to this shore. So uh, instead of landing in the water, you land on the ground and you make it and then you just swerve around a little bit and you're good to go. So that's the race. I hope you guys enjoyed it and enjoyed the challenge of it. Uh, like I said, I was originally going for really kind of a puzzle aspect of it, where you had to kind of figure out what you had to do in order to make these jumps, and uh, it kind of degenerated from there into uh, uh, a lot of technically difficult constant regens, uh, turns, uh, you know, curves in midair and whatnot. Uh, but I kind of, you know, like I didn't, re I wasn't really going for that initially. I was going for the puzzle. And uh, it, it just kind of became that, and that became kind of the habit after a while, and so you end up with constant regions. Um, it, but part of that was that the limitations of the beetles and the way they work, uh, you know, your downhill doesn't get you as much speed as uphill. Uphill always kills your speed. So, for instance, you know, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. So, for instance, there's a... If you have 10 downward slopes and then you know and a curve at the bottom and then you go back up 10 more upward slopes uh, at the same angle it's not equivalent the amount of speed even with boost that you pick up going downhill will not equate to your uphill 10 more slo 10 slopes you won't even come close to making it up 10 so uh, that then became a limitation because what I was really wanting to do initially and I might try it again later with another race but uh, what I really wanted was a bunch of down and up uh, roller coaster kind of feel to it. And I think I uh, accomplished some of that, but uh, frankly, the limitations of the Beetle uh, prevented me from really doing what I wanted with that. Um, and, and the result was that every time I went back up, essentially, uh, it, it killed our speed. And thus, you constantly needed. Uh, regens and adrenaline and boost in order to kind of maintain uh, what I was after which is the height and and on top of that there was a limitation by the map uh, you know part of what I was trying to do another of my goal was to um, use as few uh, boards as possible for one thing they used uh, you know tokens and you had to earn them but that wasn't really the, the main issue. The main issue was the eyesore. I didn't want to have a bunch of these boards uh, ruining the beauty of the map, which was the other thing I wanted, which was uh, to sh kind of highlight the map and, and how cool it is, and as well as the decorations that everybody has worked so hard for and on. And uh, so I wanted to highlight these different things, that, like Cauticus, for instance, and these waterfalls uh, and, and whatnot around the map. And that required me to make a few loops around the map because it's such a vertical map anyway and in order to make it around that many times uh you know it, i was required to constantly be trying to keep us up and get us back up sometimes because flat parts of the map were sometimes not uh you know the place i wanted to go to was higher than the place i was coming from and such and, and things like that so uh it, it it kind of limited what I could do, and that forced me then into this, well, let's just keep on regenerating, and let's keep on getting boosts, and that way you can always keep going back up a little bit if you need to. And, and that's really what led to uh, the way the map, uh, the way the race ended up being flushed out. So I do apologize for it being pretty, turning into a kind of a difficult thing. It really just kind of became habit with the... Uh, double regens and whatnot after a while uh double regen boost double regen boost and and that like that just kind of became the thing because that was the easiest way to do it uh so uh i apologize but uh, i hope you enjoy it and i hope you have fun with it and i hope you uh you know take the opportunity to explore the map a little and don't forget to go get your uh your chest at the end thanks a lot bye